Excuse me while I whip this out. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. Mmm. God damn, Gary. Some serious gourmet shit. What flavor is this? That's right. It's the all hell medium roast private blend. Check out the Geek Grind Coffee Nerdrotic page for our other options like the Decadent, Feathers of Liberty, Vanilla Infused Flavored Coffee. Or if you're looking for something darker, try the Dark Roast FNT Blend of the Fellowship. You know what? Just buy all three. GeekGrindCoffee.com. Use discount code Nerdrotic. Huzzah! Hello! Oh, thank you. You're too kind. Now stop abruptly. Very good. Welcome to Star Trek Picard Season 3, Episode 8, Surrender, Live Review, by yours truly, Gary Beekler. I'm going to cough. Hang on. Don't want to dark side fill you there. Uh, hello. Well, I got to start all these reviews this way, don't I? Um, last week's episode... Not so good. It was fine. It was fine. It was okay. You know, it, it moved the plot kind of forward. Uh, but as many have said, and uh, I agree with the assessment, even when I first watched it, um, it felt like seven and eight, episode seven and eight could have been combined into one. But eight is, is a part. I just finished watching it again uh, with my friend Jesse, who is in town, my old friend Jesse. Uh, and I liked it. I liked it. I like how it ended. Uh, it's not the strongest episode in the series, uh, but at least for me, without giving away any spoilers, I'm going to be spoiling this episode. You should just assume that. But uh, anything ahead, I will not spoil at all because it really sticks the landing. And uh, it's all about sticking the landing. Am I right, ladies? That's right. That's right not how you start it's how you finish uh the series started str strong uh and what i have been told through uh, i can't say where but friend of a friend of a cousin of a guy on the street who's got sources man sources and my source can beat up your source by the way uh, I have been told that it was budget constraints that we, sorry, my headphones are jacking up right now, uh, budget constraints. So they had the bottle within the bottle, uh, but there is a resolution and then they leave you with uh, a bit of blue balls by the end of uh, the episode. I did take notes, but there's a part where I just stopped because towards the end of the episode, it gets really really good uh so it goes from eh, it's kind of more of the same from seven to really good at the end really really good uh we got a we got some moments that we'll talk about we'll talk about but welcome everybody here in the chat mila mila what's up ah, she's always in the discord that mila mila she's always here smooth the dj uh jkd buck 76 uh ditzy ditzy Chris, welcome. Substance, as long as it's not substance abuse. Uh, welcome. Welcome to this, this review. Hopefully my headphones won't keep annoying. I'll just take them out. But I like to, you know, I got to hear myself so I'm not yelling at you guys. But like this is, uh, you know, maybe I should not use headphones I got on an airplane. <laughs> maybe I should like actually spend some money. But why? Why, when you could be cheap? I just want to be just like my old man now. Oh, 
It's beautiful. Wonderful geek grind coffee. Okay. So last episode, uh, they got back data, but data is also lore. A little bit of B4, a little bit of soon. Uh, data and lore are partitioned off from each other. And the theory is that maybe if they blended all of these personalities, that was the key to making data human. Uh, that is a setup, and we get a resolution this episode that uh, I quite like. I think they should have just done this from the get-go because the problem with data and the reason they felt like they need to kill him off in the films or whatever, very popular characters, but he's got to age. He's got to age. Now, I, I don't see this as some insurmountable problem. You just figure out a way to make him age. I mean... I, I've never saw that as a problem. Kind of like with uh, Buffy, they were always worried about, you know, Spike and Angel getting older. Well, just have them get cursed or something, and that's it. You know, you're an aging vampire now. And you can get stories out of that. All right, so we start out with uh, Vatic has taken the bridge of the Titan. And she's smoking on the bridge. Oh, my God. They're showing smoking in something. Um which is uh surprising to be honest with you so lots of monologuing this episode lots of hinting to what jack is i think with some people it should be obvious uh i figured it out i can't say how but i can say when uh, it was about halfway through the series i figured it out but I can't say how, because if I say how, then you'll know. So I figured it out. But it's fine. I was I was okay with it, especially with what happens at the end. Uh, and she unplugs. She basically takes out the power of the Titan. Uh, Jordy does manage to unplug lore slash data. But um, Vatic already kind of beat him to it. And she gathers everybody on the bridge. Now, Shaw is mad at Seven because he did. She didn't like uh, basically blow the lift. Like when when she and Shaw were in the lift, or just Shaw, I can't remember right now. Um, he he wanted him. He wanted her to just take them all out. He he was ready to die, uh, and that way it would it would have taken out at least most, but not all of the changelings and give them a fighting chance. And she said she didn't want to make that decision. And he's, you know, he kind of gets very captain on her and goes, being captain isn't about making the decision that feels right. It's about doing what is right. And now we've put, he's all, screw me. It's put the entire, he's worried about his crew. He's just completely worried about his crew. And that's, and that's his entire motivation. Uh, and he's very cautious. He's not like other other captains. Uh, so he's not going to do anything to recklessly endanger his crew, uh, which I think is pretty consistent with his character considering the first part. So there's that. Um, and uh, we also, you know, we know Jack can get into the mines of other people we saw that with sydney laforge in the previous episode when she was basically his avatar now i'm surprised uh some blue-haired weirdos on twitter haven't you know complained about that being uh you know not consent or something <laughs> you know because <laughs> they have to change music and little mermaid to for consent but somehow kids can consent now i don't know it's a weird world we live in it uh, doesn't make a lot of sense. It's very illogical. It's very illogical. Um, so, Vatic begins to monologue, and and Amanda Plummer is is much better in her role when she's toned down. So they're running through the Titan, and they're gunning down some crew, and she sees it as music. So she's on the bridge going. Nah. I was like, eh, it's a little bit too much. Uh, but when she's just like playing it like straight, uh, it, she's fine. She's fine. Not extraordinary, but she's fine. 
not extraordinary. Yeah, but when she gets over the top and mustache twirly, it gets a little bit much. Um, so Riker is back in this episode. Uh, he is a prisoner on, people are trying to call me right now. I'm live streaming. Uh, he is a prisoner on the Shrike with uh, Troy, Deanna Troy. It is, it is the real her and he's being tortured uh, to, and he does indeed give up the override code. We'll get back to that in just a second. Uh, but these scenes are really good. Uh, the uh, Deanna Troy C Riker scenes are very, very good. So we know their son died, and we know it was in previous Star Trek Picard. And, well, maybe you don't know, because most of you didn't watch it. Well, just take my word for it. Trust me, bro. It was stupid. It was stupid, because they banned all synths all synths were banned and that's why there was an uprising um and their son needed i can't some something to do with synths to save his life and they couldn't get it which is just outright bullshit Riker would break every rule possible i would break every rule possible any parent would break any rule possible to save their kid uh, especially somebody with the resources of Riker so it was stupid but how they dealt with the death uh, that they were handed with and could do nothing with other than like bringing them back to life, which, you know, whatever, um, was really good. Talked about loss, talked about grief. And we found out that the uh, rift between Troy and Riker was that she wanted to, she felt like she was losing him. She wanted to relieve his grief. So she stopped it. And part of it was because she could feel everybody's at the time. And Riker said, you know, I needed to feel that. I needed that. That was my last connection to my son. You didn't have any right to do that. Uh, then he talks about, you know, seeing uh, the birth, the the nebula birth of the space squid. And uh, how, you know, she felt he changed. Uh, so there was some good conversation there. And then it ends with, uh, he's all, she's like, should you have given him the code? He's all, there was nothing I could do. They were going to kill us. Uh, Plus, I trust Picard. He's probably got them up against the wall right now. And he didn't. And they cut to and they're screwed. <laughs> like everybody's caught. So Vatic does um, some monologuing again. And God, I'm going to forget his name. You know, I'm going to take the time to look it up. I think I should. Uh, please bear with me for a moment. I'm going to make sure I wrote it down right. I did write it down. And I should know his name because it was actually this character had a really good scene, had a really good scene. That is so un Kurtzman Trek that I got to give the guy props. I got to give the guy props. So choo, 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 there it is right there. No, nope, that's not it. I'm a dummy. I hit the wrong link. There it is right there. Um. So she is giving Jack has 10 minutes to get to the bridge. They really need Jack. And if you remember, Vatic was told by the floaty blobby head that uh, you are screwed unless you find Jack. You will be dead. So there we go. Uh, Lieutenant Mura. Lieutenant Mura. His brain is taken over by Jack. And Picard is, for one, they have to convince. He has to say, hey, I can take over people's minds. Uh, and he goes through a couple of a couple minds of uh, the crew members and sees there's a, there's a bunch of people dead. He has to explain it to Crusher and Picard. And they're like, what? And she's scanning his brain. She's like, there's no hallucination. He's like, I got no time for this. And then Sydney LaForge backs him up and says, yes, he can do it. So he gets into Lieutenant Mora's mind and Picard gives him an override code. And he starts while uh, Vatic is monologuing, he starts typing in the override code, but she catches him. She catches him and she instantly notices it's Jack in there. And she's like, oh, you're starting to realize your ability. So she obviously knows a lot more than everybody else. Um, Lieutenant Morris snaps out of it. And Vatic says she's going to start killing crew members every 10 minutes. He doesn't. He's got 10 minutes and every 10 minutes he's late. A crew member dies. So she's got a, a phaser to his head. And she, you know, she asks his name. He says, Lieutenant Mora. And she's like, no, no, I want to know more about you. Who loves you? And he's all my son. And uh, 
she's all give up the goods and he's all i can't do that i'm starfleet and he just looks her in the eye and he's like ready to die right there i'm like that's a crew member on a starship right there right there um she doesn't surprisingly kill him she puts um uh, actually ensign esmar on her knees and uh once jack fails she says your 10 minutes are up and she puts the phaser back to esmer's head and then kills Tavin, who is uh, the vulcan so they're a little bit disturbed about that and then she says you got 10 more minutes in the meantime they're trying to override everything and they can't uh sydney said hey you know i could maybe write a code in a year to override the ship my dad could maybe do it in a month uh we need a positronic brain so uh but that's not what she said but pay her trade so they're like okay we gotta we gotta get data and this is where we have like uh the, the last temptation of data again uh because that's kind of what first contact was was the last temptation of data uh so we have data fighting lore in his brain they remove the partition and they are worried that lore is just going to absorb data and that's certainly what it looks like and lore is just like yeah because because data can't take a life he's programmed not to take a life and uh jordy tells picard that and they said we got to try it anyway we just got to try it my phone is being so annoying right now now it wants to talk to me Sorry, I'm just going to turn it off. Fuck, damn phone. I hate that. Excuse me. Um, all right. So partition is lowered, and it looks like lore is going to consume data. And they're like in this, you know, just white. It's not even a room. It's a realm, and it's data's head. And you have uh, uh, Brent Spiner acting against himself, and it's a pretty cool scene. That's where it starts. And it looks like Lore has the upper hand. Uh, in the meantime, we've got some uh, Riker and Troy back into their, their cell. They're just chit-chatting away. Uh, well, they, you know, it was a very serious conversation. He said, hey, you know, like when, when I once I saw into the darkness I, and, and I made it out okay, I did change. First thing I wanted to see was you. And uh, then they started talking about like, you know, the, the conversation lightens and they go, you, I hated living in the country. I wanted them to live in the city. Uh, they do it better in the show than I'm explaining it. Uh, but then there, uh, one of the changelings uh, comes up to probably, you know, beat the crap out of Riker again. And he is killed by Worf. So Worf was sent to go find Riker. Obviously, he was on the Shrike. How did he get there? A cloak shuttle. Um, so Rafi is off with Picard's body. Uh, cause the Shrike is very lightly, uh, changelinged, can't say manned, changelinged. Um, so they free, right. Uh, Worf frees Riker and Troy. Um, the Riker and Troy scenes are the best scenes in the, this episode. Oh, and, and when Worf saves Troy and they see each other for the first time, <laughs> he starts, uh, it sounds like he's kind of hitting on her. He's like, I am so grateful to see you. You've taught me so much about empathy. And like Riker's like, okay, dude, calm down. <laughs> then there's a point where he's all, I thought this is where the part where the torture stops. <laughs> it was a good line. It was a good line. I'm paraphrasing there, but it was a good line. It was good. It was funny. Uh, okay. And I talked about Shaw being mad at seven to nine for not blowing the lift. You don't want to blow the lift. Blow in the lift. I guess that depends on somebody's consent, but blowing the lift, he should have done it. Um, we also find out that Jack just assumes that Vatic wants to bring him back to the Great Link. And Picard's all, it feels like it's something more than that. It feels like it's something more than that. Uh, but he says he's definitely not a changeling. And he thinks he can retake the ship. And that's when they came up with the idea to, to reset the code. Um, do, 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 do. So they devise a plan to once again uh, take the ship. If Data 
can defeat lore in his head. Uh, and this is a very cool scene. Uh, we start seeing data. It looks like he's just picking up items from his memory, a Sherlock Holmes hat, Sherlock Holmes pipe, and lore's, you know, clowning him. Like, what are these trivial little things? And he's all, these are memories. These, these are, these are pieces of my life. You know, they mean something to me. They have value. Uh, then he brings up Spot. Good old Spot. Uh, and Data starts giving him his memories. Gave him his uh, pack of cards he played poker with Gives and gives Lore Spot. And it looks like Lore is about to absorb him. But da, 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 it's Data. Data was giving away his memories, parts of him, because he knew Lore would see him as trophies, but in doing so, uh, he's not really absorbing Lore. Uh, it's what Soong intended, which we talked about before, which is the key for Data to be human is to have all the aspects of being human, even, even Lore, who is just one aspect of it. So they are now combined. They are now combined to make a brand new but real Data. And... He comes out of it and he's changed a little bit, but it's still data and it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And he helps them start to take back the ship. Uh, Worf, Raffi, Riker, and Troy are able to escape the Shrike because it's lightly changelinged in their cloaked shuttle. They are on their way back to the Titan. Uh, all the power has been restored and Jack's ruse to buy them time was to actually give himself up but he had a thermal detonator <laughs> from star wars uh he has a thermal detonator and he's he threatened uh, to blow up the bridge so vatic's like fine we don't need the hostages anymore we got him here i'm not worried about anything i'm gonna get this uh seven of nine decides to stay with him okay probably because they needed her in the scene and they wanted to show you know like she she was looking after picard's kid though um, and we find out that thermal detonator is actually, it's just a shield. It's a force shield. And, uh, they, bl they blow the es escape hatch, uh, and the view screen opens up and all the changelings, including Vatic get sucked into space. Uh, changelings can live in space. No problem but she um the, they're different i guess but they i think they i would assume they still could like they they're fine in space um but she does fly into a part of the shrike and break into a million pieces so she'd have to probably gather herself at some point but uh dead or not she's dead she's dead bad it gone in the eighth episode so there must be a bigger bad there must be a much bigger bad and there is Um, the other thing they found out is with Picard's body, they took out parts of his brain and they took out the parts of the brain that had the aromatic syndrome. Not sure why. Well, I actually, I am, I, I'm totally sure. I'm not telling the truth. I, I am, I'm just not going to tell you. <laughs> um, and there's, there is some hints that I won't even repeat the dialogue because there's some big hints. So Data comes back and we get our first scene with the entire crew together sitting around a table. And I, I, it's the simple things in life, just like in House of the Dragon. The best scene in that damn show was an old dying king walking across a room. For his for his kid i was just freaking epic and just a simple little scene of seeing all of them sitting around a table planning you know that there's a there's there's some like hey how you doing we've it's been too long since we did this and then they start strategizing and i'm like yes <laughs> yes uh there is i think i would say this is a a, a meta line uh considering 
that Patrick Stewart, as we all know, when he started this vanity project that was Picard and didn't want to have any other crew members in the beginning, um, says, I'm glad we're all together. I need you. Yes, you do, Patrick Stewart. Because it's never been the Captain Picard show. Never has been. Star Trek is an ensemble. You know what? As much as I love Kirk and he is the best captain by far, it's not Star Trek without Bones and Scotty and Spock and Uhura. So it's an ensemble show. They need to be together. It doesn't work without them. It's like trying to take off with your car where it's missing all four tires and uh, a transmission. It's just, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So I, I appreciated that line. I'm sure that was just an accident uh, in meaning, but uh, we know it wasn't. We know it wasn't. Uh, so this new form of data, he can, uh, he can, uh, uh, he can do contractions. He, and they made a point of that. And um, I just want to point out that they had data do contractions in Picard season one. <laughs> so I thinking that was a <laughs> right in there. Yes. I think that was a shot. I think that was a shot. So uh, they start talking about Jack as they're strategizing and I'm like loving every minute of this scene and it's just a simple scene, but like, that's how simple this has to be. You know, when, when you're doing a project, like bringing back old characters from an old franchise, you certainly want to introduce new characters. Uh, but I would, I would argue very strongly, like in the vein of Ash versus evil dead, Cobra Kai, this show did it. There's new characters now uh, I give a shit about. Like, I care about. I want to, I, I would, I like, I like, they don't, they don't annoy me. Uh, that's, that's remarkable considering the Kurtzman Trek garbage we've gotten before. So I think uh, that's a big win right there. So they're talking about one of these new characters, Jack, uh, Picard's kid. And as soon as Troy got on the Titan, and they like Vatic is gone. The changelings are gone. The bad guy has been defeated. The awesome Star Trek movie uh, uh, music plays. We see the Titan flying off. And it's like, oh, yeah, because it had been really dark last episode. And there have been a lot of light moments. Uh, the light moments, the Star Trek moments came back this episode. And it ended, I think, pretty good. So as soon as Troy sets foot on the titan she's like whoa she gets she she almost you know falls down and she's all there is a darkness on this ship and it is it's jack it's not in him but it's around him and it's running through him so it's another entity so she needs to meet jack they have a little therapy session and uh she sees the red door we've been seeing and not not the red door in bravos i know that's where a song of ice and fire fans is gonna go right there they are there's been entire theories about the red door in bravos uh a guy like centered his entire channel around the red door in bravos that uh danny always uh denaries always dreams about in the books not the show the books she dreams of the red door in Bravos and the lemon tree where she grew up. That's, that's where I go to every time, but it's different red door. Uh, it's red door with like a uh, little tentacle things, little mauler tentacles coming out of it. And uh, she wants to, uh, you know, and he's been afraid to go through it because he doesn't want to see what's behind it. So she's all, I'll go with you. So they, they hold hands, they get into a Jack's mind um, and they go to open the door. That's where the episode ends. That's some blue balls. I, mm, I can, I can understand the process in the writer's room going, we should probably carry this out to the next episode. I would have put in the reveal. That's just me. I'd have put in the reveal. I think it would have helped this episode more, but it's definitely a, a step up from last episode, right? Uh, I enjoyed it. I thought there was great character work in it, uh, particularly with Data, Riker, and Troy. 
okay, Raffi fights some uh, changelings with um with with knives, which made no sense at all because they're changelings. Like you couldn't wouldn't, like wouldn't it do nothing to him? So I I don't understand that. Um, she defeats him, but thankful I guess think what recovers it is Worf comes in and just fucking phasers him. <laughs> so it's like okay, but still I'm like why is she what they're globular creatures like that shouldn't affect them even if they're in their human form they could just you know react to it right but um you know it's not without its flaws uh, star trek picard season three is not without its flaws but what it doesn't have is intersectional feminism woke shit fucking picard apologizing all the time uh and just this dreary darkness there's actual levity uh and most importantly there's pretty good dialogue it's pretty good dialogue uh shaw jack sydney laforge three really good to great new character shaw is great shaw is like flat out todd stashwick shaw is great is a great new star trek character the first new great one in decades so props to Terry Metalis for the, and Todd Stashwick, who, I mean, he's freaking great in 12 Monkeys too. That guy, how that guy doesn't get more work, not really sure. Not really sure, but he should. He should. And he's a big dork in real life. So I can appreciate that. Uh, but I would say seven out of 10 episode. All right. And now, and now be ready, be ready for the last two. Be ready for the last two. Um, because as somebody eloquently stated on Twitter, I wish I could give you credit. My memory is shit. That, that is my fault. That is my flaw. I apologize. I did not say this. Somebody said it on Twitter that Star Trek Picard season three manages to perfectly thread the needle between good character work, work and fan service. Like no other. Uh, yes, there's fan service in here. I and 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 be ready for fan service is going to put a big old smile on your face, big old stupid Star Trek smile on your face. And if it could do it to me in my cold black little heart that only manages to have inklings of feelings for like my kids. No, I'm just kidding. It's, it's not. It's black ish you know uh but um yeah i I'm, i imagine a lot of you will probably enjoy it so hang in there hang in there uh but yeah i like this episode a lot better uh riker you gotta have you can't have an episode without riker you just can't you can't uh jonathan frakes killed it absolutely killed it beginning to end mvp michael dorn mvp hell todd stashwick mvp there hasn't been as uh, as much of him uh but that changes that changes yeah the only person uh, the only actor and like again got nothing against this woman her dad was a freaking legend and i loved her loved her in fisher king one of my all-time favorite movies oh and and pulp fiction of course amanda Plummer, right uh that's the that's the only eh. Uh, even, you know, I, it's, <laughs> it is hard. This is why if you want to, if you want to be a adult pretender, when you grow up, take, take a little old unsolicited advice from your pal, Gary. And I'm sure many of you will echo this sentiment. Many of my fellow contract content creators have echoed this. Many of you have echoed this sentiment already. Uh, if you want to be an adult pretender in Hollywood and be successful, uh, work on your craft. Work on your pretending. Uh, I, th there's many people I would call actors. You know, thespians, people who can really do it well. Um, and shut the fuck up. Have your beliefs. Don't really care. But every time you go out on Twitter and, I don't know, whinge about Texas Republicans when people are freezing to death here in the state, uh, and saying things like, this is what you got. 
by our hiring Republicans. And it might have been when you were drunk or pissed off or emotional. It came out bad. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's it mat what matters is how people are going to interpret it. And those are potential paying customers, viewers. If you were going to go on social media, right? And you are rep especially like it's one thing if you're making your own thing, doing your own thing, whatever, but you have an entire organization. You, you got that uniform on, you got Star Trek's uniform on. So it's not just like the dipshits, Kurtzman. You have Gene Ronberry's uniform on, DC Fontana's uniform on. And you go out there and say that shit, it's going to be really hard when people see you on the screen to separate that. That's called being human. So, a lot of actors used to not give interviews. It's probably under advisement from their agents. Like Harrison Ford used to not give interviews. And now we know why. We thought he was like, oh, it's all about keeping the mystery. It's no, he's a dumb shit. <laughs> it's a total dumb shit. Same with, same with Patrick Stewart. You know, for as much shit as William Shatner gets, dude is freaking smart. Dude is genius level smart. He's genius level charming. Uh, an act, uh, you know, a Shakespearean trained actor and people freaking love him. Unless you got a William Shatner and that's a once in a lifetime personality. Uh, shut the fuck up. Just be quiet. Let your work speak for yourself. If you have a political issue, go vote on it. How, half these motherfuckers, eight, 90% of these motherfuckers don't vote anyway. That goes for all y'all in Hollywood. I, I said it a couple uh, a couple years ago. You know what? Just try something. Just try for one year not to be political about anything. Just one year, 365 days. They couldn't last 12 hours. I, I'm here to inform, uh, you know, anybody, any actor, uh, Anytime you spout off your politics, chances are you're helping the person you're complaining about much more. You're not influencing anybody. You're just pissing people off. To contrast that, we have uh, a showrunner that really wanted to make a good Star Trek show. And, you know, not just a good Star Trek show for me or for Az or for Dave Cullen or the drinker, uh, wanted to make it for, for everybody did the best he could. And, and that philosophy was, well, I have constraints, but I can now I have constraints going in here, but not on the actual show. And I can go in here and kind of do what I want and do the best I can with a very, 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 very limited budget. Like this show got nothing. It got like three fifty. Tree fifty. That's how much they made this show for. And they pulled it off. Let's go to you. Let's go to you. Uh, we got um Big worm for $10. Also, it's hard to like Marina on a screen now 100%. Also, shout out to Terry. I was genu genuinely sad when uh, when she died. You can spoil. I haven't cared at all for any STT until this season. When, when, oh, when uh, Vatic, when Vatic died. Yeah, when Vatic died, well, Vatic was just, she was always there to be a stepping stone for something else. It's kind of a hoodwink. Um, and uh, no, I, I was, uh, uh, so you were sad when, when Vatic died. Mm, I wasn't, I, I, I felt like Amanda Plummer's acting like right at the end got better. Like when she was just, when she was talking to Jack, and you could see desperation in her eyes and you could see her pain from being removed from the link. That was good. That was good. You can actually see that, but that was right before she died. Uh, uh, 
Yep, I haven't uh, Big Worm. I haven't cared about any single single character. And uh, uh, when the 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 Vulcan died too, you know, she she was in it not very much, but she w she was a very much a member of the crew. It's kind of a bummer to see her go. It's kind of a bummer to see her go. I thought that was a very good Vulcan. She was a very good Vulcan. So thank you, Big Worm, for ten dollars. Sorry, it took me a second. My brain's slow. Just is, just is. Uh, we saw the changeling in the experiments crystallized and broken. We also know they can survive in space. How is she dead? Um, she probably, maybe she's alive. Like they don't say she's dead. I'm just assuming that because little pieces of her are now floating forever in space away from each other. So unless she can find a way to get momentum and get all her pieces, I don't know how many pieces changelings need to be whole. Maybe just one. But uh, a fate worse than death, then, we'll say. Being alive, floating around helplessly in space with little to no chance of running into a ship she can attach herself to. So as good as dead. We'll say that. Thank you, Chris. Oh, uh, no, I meant Tavine. Gotcha. Yeah, Tavine was good. That's what, okay. Thank you, Big Worm. You didn't have to super chat again. That was my mistake. Yeah, Tavine was a good Vulcan. I thought she was very good. I was, was sorry to see her go. I'm like, wow, why that one? I mean, I like Lieutenant Mora too, especially like he had his like little badass moment staring down the, the barrel of a phaser and just like do it. My kid will understand. It's like, hell yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's actually heroic and good and i'm down with that all right give me just a moment doop, doop, doop. sorry big worm about uh, miss understanding your super chat i appreciate you um i really want to see the next two episodes though i do that's that's kind of the problem you know weekly is good though because now if this had dropped all at once, it had been a disaster. Now, I, I wish they would have done that with Picard season one and two because it was brutal watching those weekly. But if this had dropped all at once, it would not have what, what momentum it has. How well is this show doing? I have no idea. I have no idea. I just know this is the most positively anybody has talked about Star Trek since 2009. And before, uh, uh, you know, back in back when Enterprise was still on, I was knee deep in running a comic shop, so I can't tell if there was a you know I wasn't on any forums about that show or anything. But um, this is the most positively somebody's talked about Star Trek in decades, <laughs> as far as I know. Um, and this is the proper TNG send off and this is the only thing you need to see you do not need to see strange new worlds with uh, a con descendant on the bridge and i always have to see that stupid clip beforehand going do you ever speak proper english to spock all right and it's like that's all he speaks is the most proper english there is it's a dumb line that's a stupid fucking line um and uh star trek discovery worst written star trek show by far Worst written science fiction show of all time? I think so. I think so. Picard season one and two. Most damaging to the Star Trek brand? More damaging than Star Trek Discovery. You can forget Star Trek Discovery. You go, that is just fucking some stupid shit. Uh, foster sister to Spock, you freaking retards. But um, yeah, uh, uh, Picard did more damage. Picard did more damage. And I, I didn't watch the cartoon. I, I watched the first three cartoons and I'm like, well, I don't like Rick and Morty that much. So I don't like this. Um, if you like Rick and Morty, that's fine. I, I, obviously, I am not smart enough to like Rick and Morty. That's what I was told. I wasn't smart enough to like Rick and Morty. Fine. <laughs> Give a shit. Uh, if, if having to be smart means liking it, uh, I'll be dumb. 
Uh, Gary, what program do you guys use uh, for video calls and live streams with? Uh, Heroic Kitten for five dollars. I use um, Stream Yards. There, it's not great. I miss Google Hangouts a lot still, but I use Stream Yards. Um, I've occasionally used. I, I hate Zoom. I will not use Zoom ever again. Ever again. F Zoom, uh, but I use StreamYards or uh, or, uh, you know, or Discord. Uh, Big Worm for ten dollars. Also, it's hard to. Li- I read that one already. And uh, hail all this morning, six a.m. I laughed loudly. Wife peeks in, and what did Worf say now? Uh, I don't know if I want Worf like this at all, all the time, but just enough new Worf is amazing. Live long and prosper. Big warm. Yeah, when he's sitting around the table and they're being, <laughs> when they're being all reminiscent. Uh, thank you, Big Worm, for $10. And, uh, you know, like Troy's like, oh, I know we've been separated, but even in my darkest times, I still talk to you. And it turns out even when you're not around, you get good advice. She's like, I love you too. And Picard's like, I need you. And everybody's like, I miss you. And Data's like, what's up? I have emotions now. I can use contractions. And, and fucking Worf goes, I have slayed many em- enemy. I have slayed many enemies and severed many heads. And I thought of sending them to you, but I was told that would be passive aggressive. I laughed too. <laughs> I fucking love Worf. That's why he's my favorite character. That's why he's my favorite character. Uh, Graham Paul Tauken, uh for four ninety nine. Terry Metalis accomplished what Kathleen Kennedy could not. They got the legacy characters all in the same scene. Yes, they did. How about that? How about that? You got every single legacy character in the, like Rafi wasn't there. It was all the legacy characters in the same scene sitting around a table. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And that must have been so difficult to, and the producers, I can see the dumb producers going, wait a minute, you want the legacy characters to sit around the table and discuss strategy? Like, who's going to find that interesting? And then, uh, then I'd punch that producer right in the mouth, right in his stupid mouth in Minecraft. Uh, yeah, that was, that was great. Spot is canonically a male cat again. Yes, he is, Graham. Yes, he is. Uh, it was good to see, well, a version of a spot. I like spot. So, um, yeah, that was great. And, oh, wait. Oh, wait. That's not. I'm going to shut up now. Have fun. Let, let yourself have fun. It's okay to have fun. You're a fan. This is what you're in this for in the first place. So uh, did I think Star Trek would be the one to like, it doesn't write the ship for the franchise, unfortunately, just to get one thing right for one show in the middle of a bunch of garbage. No, no. As a matter of fact, they were probably last on my list just above Star Wars. Uh, I actually thought RTD would probably do it with Doctor Who. Uh, I, I no longer think that, but um, Terry Metalis has managed to pull off nothing short of a miracle, giving us good Star Trek. That's all. Garrett Barley for nine ninety nine. Hey Gary, my mom has just been diagnosed with cancer. Oh no! Ugh, fuck cancer, man. I've been through that. Uh, she introduced me to Star Trek, Star Wars, and Lord of the Rings. Fans make fans, uh, not corporations. Thank you, Garrett. Uh, all my uh, all my good vibes to your mom. I hope she's going to be okay. Hope uh, it's not that bad. Uh, and uh, yeah, everybody, give, give Garrett good vibes, man. Uh, she'll beat it. Your mom's tough. Foiter, dank. I will, will. Oh, you gave me a pronunciation, but I can't see it. Hang on. Where's this going to take me? Uh, feed. Oh, Feodor Dankstoevsky. Ha. Hey, Gary. I know that 40K show is years off. 
but I'd check out the 10th edition drop trailer to get a feel of the universe's modern history. Also, scratch that Starship Troopers itch. Okay. I hope it's years off because they're going to make it right. Uh, not to pull a Mickey G on Picard, but I resolved the Beverly having a kid later in life, uh, Baku. Uh, we didn't know how long she was there, but definitely couldn't uh, have turned back time. Problem solved. There you go. Uh, yeah. And again, like, yeah, she had a kid really late in life that was talked about before. It's a 24th century. I think they could pull it off. Janet Jackson had a kid at 50. Uh, but she's like insanely, stupidly rich too. Uh, have you purchased the TNG films 4K box set? Yes. Uh, Grem. I have not. I have not. I will uh, as a completion completionist but i have not because they're not my favorite i i don't mind first contact I, a lot of people do i i don't um i fucking hate generations though that's what keeps me off as i hate that movie i'll never watch that movie i won't even break the plastic on that movie just won't do it not gonna do it uh that's why i love what what terry did just a little easter egg of Kirk in the background was good enough for me, which uh, could possibly make the return canon. Love that book. I'm going to reread it or I'm going to probably listen to it uh, on the way out to Vegas. On the way out to Vegas, which is in, uh, I leave in 15 days. Oh my God, I've got so much work to do. Uh, <laughs> I've got so much to do before then. Uh, sorry. You know, I've got this fabulous computer. I should not be doing this. It should not be doing this. All right, we're going to wrap things up. I have to get to work. I have to, um, I'll read what's left of these. And then I'll take off. All right, uh, Rick, Jana, thank you for the $2 and the super sticker. Hey, you, hey, you. Uh, Corwin's pattern goes for $5. I didn't bother with season one. Couldn't get past episode two of season two. I've been loving season three because it's actually good. Yes. Dude, if like Mandalorian season three was good, I would tell you it was good. I... I I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. I know what the detractors say. The detractors don't spend any time here. They just look at our thumbnails and they don't really care about the content we talk to. They're not really that big of fans, especially of the stuff they talk about. I mean, look at how much do they talk about books? They, they talk about all the surface level shit Our detractors, by the way. They talk about what the trades say. They talk about another YouTube video, but they never really get in depth about the actual material. Like the Mandalorian season three is shit. I'm feeling really good about my two tweets. There's going to be a third saying Picard season three is greater than the Mandalorian season three. I mean, it's a low bar, but the Mandalorian season three is terrible. It is utterly terrible terrible and it and it exemplifies everything wrong with lucasfilm which is a very similar organization to secret hideout bad leadership people who don't give a shit about the intellectual properties they've had it too long they've grounded in the dirt um one guy snuck in make some good stuff and somehow he had to play ball with with kurtzman who brought him in he had to play ball with them and then, and then deal with the fan base that's just destroyed, and it's not Terry's fault. It's Kurtzman's fault. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Mandalorian Season 3 is terrible. But if it was good, I would tell you it was good. I mean, like, I hate the fact that I have to say this out loud, but and then 
I'm not even, I will not only tell you why I don't think it's good. I'll tell you why I don't think it's good. You may or may not agree. I made a whole video roasting the shit out of it because I, you know, I couldn't be bothered with a video, but it got, it got down to so, it was so bad. It got down to Star Trek Discovery level, level. So I, I'm like, once I'm watching something and unintentionally laughing my ass off, I'm like, oh, I need to do a review on this. I'm, I'm having fun roasting this horrible piece of entertainment. Oh. A Starfleet uh, being uh, a Starfleet being selfless. Who knew that would work? Says good Ghost Rider. Two dollars. I know, I know that was uh, that little scene. I was just like, yes. That that's how long it's been since we've gotten something that freaking cool, right? And it's just a little scene. I I don't know if many people thought about it at all, but when I when I when he said, my son loves me, and then he's like. I am right back into being a Starfleet officer. What I was trained for. Do your best, bitch. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Radio Man 1017 for $5. You forgot Lower Decks? No, I didn't. Uh, the most sexist and racist show on TV. Uh, swap the race sex of two main characters and you'll see all hail the fellowship. I, I watched five episodes of it and it was shit. And uh, I stopped. I stopped. And it's just a dumb cartoon. And, and whoever thought it was an idea to make a dumb cartoon lampooning Star Trek when the the organization that's in in charge of it has been doing that they haven't figured it out so you so so you make a cartoon that's basically a parody of Star Trek when you can't even fucking make Star Trek so it makes it sound like you hate Star Trek even more which worse even worse hating is some form of caring you know nothing about it you're apathetic towards it Kurtzman. And it shows. It absolutely shows. One does not simply walk into Lord of the Rings, Star Trek, Star Wars, and think I can just willy-nilly do my own thing. What did that dumb bitch, Jenny, Jen Salky? I put up her quote yesterday. I'm working on this video right now. It's going to be a day or two till it comes out. But uh, when we found out that Lord of the Rings uh, lost two-thirds of its audience by the end of the first episode proving that amazon are a bunch of damn liars proving that the fellowship is the strongest fandom out there and you were right so take your victory lap because you earned it smoke them if you got them uh let me tell you what this bitch said oh and people don't like her. so many people don't like her people from her own organization just spilled the beans in an article on her like it's 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 kind of unprecedented and like the the article i'm going over is kind of like really juicy like so um the first quote that's in the byline from amazon chief jennifer sulky is you don't reverse engineer true creative vision what what the fuck did you just say rings of power was completely vandalizing destroying reverse engineering true creative vision something you don't have and kurtzman did the same thing kathleen kennedy did the same fucking thing oh i saw that i'm like i can't believe she just said that she is an arrogant overconfident dumb bitch And she got, she got, she got her ass beat. And this is a high level executive who used to run an embassy entertainment. Who's not used to getting her ass beat. And now she's surrounded herself with a bunch of yes men. Who's like, Oh no, no, no. Rings of power doing great. Well, I'm sure Kurt's been surrounded himself with a bunch of idiots going star Trek doing great. Uh, no, it's not. No, it is not. And, and when, when they get good star Trek, it proves it even more. See, it it drives the point home because there's people who have been very critical of me, fine with it, don't really give a shit, who are now liking the same thing I like. Wow. How did that happen? 
did I sell out? Was I shill? Or did I just watch something I liked? Uh, I'm going to watch Picard after the full season drops. You know, that's not a bad idea. I don't think it's a bad idea. It would help it more uh, if it was watched weekly. But again, I have no idea what the viewership is. I, I can't honestly tell you this is successful. I know there's a lot more conversation about it but I can't tell you if it's successful. I, I, I don't know. I, it, it might be too little too late. We will see. And, and honestly, I would love to tell you, I think this will change things, but it, I don't think it will. I think the reverse will happen. And I've said this since the very first review that Alex Kurtzman will steal Terry Metalis's valor, his, uh, his good creative work and make more shit. Cause that's how it goes in Hollywood. Most of them are dumb. Uh, I'm going to watch Picard after the full season drops. Does Chief O'Brien show up? Uh, DS9 is my favorite, so he's my favorite TNG character by default. Um, no. He does not, but I love I love the character. But you'll like other things. Just don't want to set you up with any false expectations. Uh, but thank you. Thank you for the super duper duper chat. All right. Um, Radio Man 1017. Thank you again. Uh, Big Worm for $5. Can we all just give a round of applause for the fracking ready room scene again? Yes. That was damn near X-rated proper fan service. I know. <laughs> that, is, that was porn. It was outright geek porn. That's what it was. Thank you, Big Worm. Uh, of Man, Not Machine for $5. Was hoping the big bad would be Gul Dukat. Looking less likely now. Worried that the big bad will end up being something disappointing like Armas. Um, okay. I, I can't say anything. Um, if I didn't give a shit about the show, I would. But I won't. Because I give a shit about the show. And that's the only reason that's stopping me from saying anything. You got two weeks. You find out. Actually, you find out next week. You find out next week. Keep in mind, with Kurtzman Trek, we are so, I mean, like, he tries to train the audience on the problem and the plot. And the characters are ancillary. They're fucking nothing. They're paper thin. This is about the crew, the old crew of the Enterprise. This is about the next generation crew. That's what this show is about. God, it's good. I mean, there's other things in it, but that's not what the, uh, what, what makes for me, what makes good television because it's serialized and I grew up on serialized storytelling because I read comic books uh, and I prefer it uh, other than like, you know, awesome fantasy like Lord of the Rings, but it's characters. I've said this a million times, characters. Why do I like Buffy the Vampire Slayer? It's got good characters. Why do I like Angel? Good characters. Why do I like Firefly? Good characters. X-Files, great characters. Battlestar Galactica, great characters. Plots for some episodes, hit and miss, hit and miss, but I still like the characters. I like Farscape, brilliant, brilliant characters. Doctor Who, brilliant characters. With one of the greatest characters ever written, the Doctor. Deadwood, I could just go on forever. <laughs> I could go on forever. All right. Hopefully I didn't miss any. Uh, okay. We're going to wrap it up there. I, th I really appreciate you guys being here. Um, 
never, ever let anybody shame you for your nerd flag. Uh, I am not about going after fans. You like what you like. I'm going to not like what I not like, and I will talk about it. We may strongly disagree. Now, some people go out and call me a, a bigot and a white supremacist, right? Supreme sandwich, I'll say, and all that other shit because I don't like The Last Jedi or I don't like Jody Whitaker as Doctor Who because the doctor's a man, not a woman. I'll say shit like that. Um, and I don't care if people like it. I really don't. I really don't. It doesn't bother me at all. You can make all your videos. Make a better argument. Go out, make a better video, make a better argument. Uh, but if you like this, if you hate it, all right, you're a fan. Fair enough. Especially if you've watched it. I find it, it's helpful to actually watch this stuff before criticizing it or covering it or reacting to it. Um, but you do you, you're a fan. And, uh, as a fan, uh, I hope one day we can all just come together, you know, Back the good old days when we used to used to just shoot the shit about all this stuff and fight about the normal stuff. Like who's a better captain? Obviously Captain Kirk. But you know, the normal shit. So I, I thank you. I, I I can't wait for next week. I'm looking forward to next week. This is so weird. It's so weird. And I will see you on Friday night tights. We have Drew Hernandez and Geeks and Gamers are going to make me watch the Super Mario movie. Somehow I'm going to see it before Friday. Uh, and they're going to want to talk about it. So I might take an hour off. <laughs> no, I'll be there. Um, and we're definitely going to talk about the state of Star Wars because Lucasfilm hit a brand new low just when you thought they couldn't get any lower. They do. And it, honestly, Lizzo was lame. Lizzo and Jack Black were lame. We can no longer make fun of the Disney Star Wars Christmas or the Star Wars Christmas special. That's not Disney. We can't because it's no longer not even close to being the lamest thing Star Wars has ever done. It's more canonical. It's more entertaining. And I would rather watch it a hundred times more than anything Disney Star Wars and especially the last episode of The Mandalorian. No, the worst thing they did in that episode is show you that the Mandalorian's no longer about the Mandalorian. <laughs> they MCU'd it. And quite frankly, Lucasfilm has been more MCU than Marvel. Uh, they're way ahead of Marvel on the MCU. Uh, but it's it's freaking MCU or star hers. Disney star hers. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm spitballing. I'll think of something better. Uh, but it's the woman DeLorean. So we'll definitely be talking about that. Of course, uh, Amazon lying. Amazon Lying will talk about that. So it'll be fun. It'll be a fun day tomorrow. Uh, oh, and Drunk 3PO is finally, he begged and 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 groveled and begged, bribed, begged. And I just got caught in a moment of weakness on Tuesday night's main event. And I said, you could be on the show. Automatically regretting that decision, but I can't go back on it now. So Drunk 3PO will be there too. Uh, Matthew Hammond. Maybe I did. I don't know. I didn't see it. Let me uh, refresh. Let me refresh. I got the one that says, did you miss my super chat? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, I'm glad to hear you started Stargate SG-1. Unlike Star Trek Next Generation, you do not have to watch three seasons for it to get good. <laughs> you're funny. You're funny. Matthew, uh, you know what? Tell you what. I know you're a smart guy. Get that 30-hour 30, 30 day go going. Get that 30 hour day going. Um, hey, hey, it's it's not it's not unlike the Mandalorian. Hey, it always takes season three of a series six episodes to get going. <laughs> no, uh, Picard season three schooled it, absolutely schooled it. And you want to know why? It's really simple. It's really simple. Picard season one brought in a Pulitzer Prize winning author didn't know what the fuck he was doing then they brought in akiva goldsman who won an academy award didn't know what the fuck he's doing they bring in a guy who used to work on star trek and has written television before and oh look at that he knows what he's fucking doing it's like it's rocket science 
Uh, same could be said about John Favreau. By all accounts, seems like a nice guy. No problem with him. I freaking love Swingers. I love Maid. I love Elf. I love Iron Man. I didn't even watch The Lion King because I, I didn't watch the first one. Don't give a shit. Um, but he seemed, I, I liked him as Foggy. I really liked him as Foggy in that uh, the Daredevil director's cut with Ben Affleck, which isn't as bad as the theatrical cut, let's just say. Um, I like John Favreau. He can't write television. The man cannot write television. He is out of his league. Terry Metalis wrote circles around John Favreau. Like spinning. Like a rotisserie. All right. Uh, sorry, Matthew. Uh, make sure I didn't miss any more. Okay, yeah, that, that one that was weird. My bad. All right. Thanks, everyone. The lesson life, nice long goodbye. I will see you Friday on the main channel. Y'all have a very good day. Thanks to the mod Rodics. Thanks to everyone who left the super chat and donation. You help keep the lights on. I'm working on a rings of power video. That's what I'm doing next. See you around.